think I am almost packed for my 2022 trip to Churchill, Manitoba. I fit one more thing in my low pro. Of course, one more thing. <laughs> okay. I am leaving some beautiful weather, highs in the 50s and 60s here in mid-June and uh, going up to where the Hudson Bay is still frozen up there at Churchill, Manitoba. Gonna fly up this time, so gonna drive to Winnipeg and then fly up. <laughs> I've taken the train before and that's now about 42 hours one way from Winnipeg, so not gonna happen. Wish me luck. Dangerous goods removed. Turns out it was one of those lithium ion power banks. I didn't even think about it. Churchill is a town of about 900 people. Of course, it's best known for polar bear tours in October and November, and increasingly for the belugas in July and August. Uh, birders formerly came here in the droves back in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s for the Ross's Gull a gull native to Siberia that nested here for about 20 years. And back in 2017, the Canadian government sponsored a public art project where artists from all over the world painted their murals on buildings around town. Pretty cool. I stay at the Polar Inn. I love it. Got a dog at the door to greet you. Uh, they got a lot of local information on wildlife and birds. And a killer breakfast buffet. My first stop is always Cape Mary, but on this day I got distracted by a pretty cool bird. I'm within about 20 feet of a ptarmigan. He's definitely letting me just hang with him. You see him? He's right over there on that rock. He just laid down. He's gonna take a nap on top of this rock. I wanna get him vocalizing, but uh, he's not being cooperative in that way. I've already taken so many photos. I don't know what to do next. Just need him to do some behavior now. I am definitely back in my happy place here on Cape Mary, Churchill, Manitoba, on Hudson Bay. And I've got uh, five or six male common eiders out here displaying for a one female. The blugas are surfacing. Uh, Pacific loons flying by, icebergs, which are scaring the heck out of me because they collapse all of a sudden and make a huge noise. This one right in front of me is going to collapse soon. But yeah, just a blast. Talked with the ranger and there's been no polar bears sighted in this area 
So that's good and bad. This is what happens when you're so focused on birds and the tide is coming in and there's my tripod. I'm not trapped yet, but I got to get going. <laughs> Pretty good first afternoon here in Churchill out here at Cape Mary on this sunny, gorgeous day. I don't think I'm going to have many more like this. But yeah, the beluga whales are back. The river's open. So I've seen a couple dozen, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> but seals and common eiders have been very active with courtship. Uh, parasitic Jaeger going back and forth. Red throated loons, one came kind of close. So, yeah, good way to start the trip. It is 8.30 p.m. and I just spotted out on the tundra here a pond with a pair of long-tailed ducks and a pair of Pacific loons. So we got about maybe an hour and a half of light left so I think this is gonna be it for the night. Just gonna go out there and sit and see what happens. Well just a few minutes after I got into my chair here and my netting Pacific loons flew off and that's kind of weird because they're usually really curious and they'll swim towards you. But the mosquitoes aren't bad. I think it must have been like 65 degrees here today. We'll just wait it out. We got about an hour before sunset. I missed a short-eared owl too that had my back turned. It would have been gorgeous light. It would have been unbelievable. Oh well. I moved over to this other lake because I saw these Pacific loons weren't quite as spooky. And boy, I sure glad I did. And they've been very cooperative. Pacific loons are just stunning birds. Yes, we have common loons here in Minnesota, and you know, I guess maybe because I see them a lot, I'm not as intrigued by them as these guys. When I started birding back in the 1970s, <clears throat> these were called Arctic loons. And then ornithologists split off the North American population and called them Pacific loons. You can see their breeding range in orange on this map, way up on the tundra. And they are thought to be the most abundant loon in North America which is maybe hard for us to believe when we see so many common loons down here in the Minnesota and the Northeast. And then there's a third one that flew in and I think it maybe it's another female. So the male's trying to decide which one is a good mate. This is pretty cool. Sun's going down. I got about another 20 minutes maybe.
5 a.m. start, right at sunset at 10 something p.m. Got all my files downloaded, batteries and the chargers, and uh, had a, another sandwich for dinner at 4.30 a.m. alarm. Kind of hit me. So the plan is to go back for the Polar Inn breakfast spread, which is pretty good. Yeah, I'm roughing it in Churchill. This awesome breakfast buffet at the Polar Inn. So I have to get back by nine. We had snow till May 9th in Duluth, but here it's June 17th, 18th. Still have snow in Churchill. And this was not my first trip to Churchill, Manitoba. I was here in 1987 and also 2017, just five years ago. Had same high-end rental trucks. Did my pilgrimage to Miss Piggy. Had to get up in the cockpit. But back in 1987, my volleyball buddy Tyler and I made the trip on the train. 36 hours, but we had fun. There were cute little native girls on the train, and they thought our hairy legs were so funny. They'd say, you have hairy legs, and then they'd giggle. The train car back then was just filled with smoke. Smoking was allowed, and, you know, we didn't really think anything about it back then. This is the famous Granary Ponds where I saw my first Ross's gull back in 1987. A Siberian species that for about 20 years nested around Churchill, then disappeared in the early 2000s again. Probably went back to Siberia. That sure felt like a lifer. Uh, I found a little gull at the Moose Lake sewage ponds in my home county many, many years ago. It was kind of a brief look. This was amazing. There's three, at least three, and maybe four little gulls. And they all have this gorgeous pink wash on their breast. That's usually crustacean diet related. And this is the first time I got to see them side by side with the, the slightly bigger Bonaparte's gulls. And if you're going to find a little gull in Minnesota, oh. I guess even here in Manitoba, they're often with Bonaparte gulls. Amazing time with them. Their voice is very different. Baller, the hood, the black hood comes down lower. Their legs are uh, more red than orange. And they're little. And they get, of course, the main thing easy to pick out when they're flying is these nice black underwing. The entire underwing is black. No no decent light, but uh, maybe I'll come back. Yeah. I forgot to say that little gulls are native to Europe. Makes it even more exciting. They, they have established little colonies in North America now, but still very rare. Got a pair of semi-palmated plovers and uh, they like this kind of rocky gravelly area uh, that's the, where they like to lay their eggs kind of like killdeer I've been sneaking up on them but they know I'm here uh, I got the uh, broken wing display <laughs> so I'm just gonna get a few more photos and leave them alone
crawling on gravel is, uh, yeah, that's for younger people. <laughs> Here on Goose Creek Road, got a crazy number of birds. Great cheek thrush, which I've never gotten a photo before of, which is awesome. Uh, there's a merlin over there. There's rusty blackbirds. Um, northern water thrush, yellow warblers, fox sparrows singing. So I'm just trying to kind of. The sun pops in and out of the clouds, so I'm. Kind of picking and choosing my times, but what is that? Okay, the fox sparrow. I was gonna say the mosquitoes are horrendous. <laughs> but duty calls, gotta get some video of this fox sparrow. Got evidently the last bottle of real bug dope in Churchill, well, at least at the northern store. 25% deep. I thought they'd have shelves full of this stuff. Ran into a local guy down at the beach at Cape Mary. He was getting firewood from the driftwood that the river brought in last winter. He said there was a polar bear sighting yesterday at Miss Piggy, the, the crashed plane site. So you know where I'm going. Yeah, let's go say hi to Miss Piggy. Here on the unspoiled tundra on the edge of Hudson's Bay, I give to you Miss Piggy. crashed in 1979. Cargo plane, nobody got hurt, everybody just walked away. Here it sits, graffitied on this side and uh, it's part of the art project five years ago. It's prettied up on the other side. There was a polar bear seen around here yesterday. So I'm gonna probably get back to my truck. <laughs> Third time to Churchill, still no polar bear. Of course, I'm here in the summer for birds. Most of the bears are still out on the ice. But the forecast is for rain, 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 rain. But, you know, those forecasts can look bad on your weather apps, but usually they're not as bad as it shows. Top one. 